Hi, this is Toby from Lift Tech Mobility. So in today's video, we're going to be talking over the Smart Chair X. Uh, the Smart Chair X is our flagship model and also the most capable uh, model we have, uh, if not on the whole UK market, to be fair. It's got the highest ground clearance, its lowest point being four inches, its highest point being six inches, um, which if you look at any spec on the internet, is second to none. Uh, it's got 12 and a half inch rear wheels, um, 12 point, uh, sorry, uh, solid rubber tyres, uh, rubber is going to be grippier, harder wearing, it's giving you more traction, and it's got your upgraded 8 inch uh, spongy front wheels, um, which means it's going to be better over your rougher surfaces, um, better for going up and down curbs, it's going to hold more traction on canvas. Um, well, I'm going to just unfold the chair for you, so real simple, you can just flick it forward, gravity is going to then bring it down, there's a few ways you can do this. If you want to fold the chair, you stand to the side of it and behind it, you put your right hand or your other hand across the body, bring it back, so now the weight and gravity is back, and now you can just bring your hands together. And this isn't a strength thing, so anyone that ever says, this, I can't fold and unfold a wheelchair um, that is able-bodied, it's because you're not doing it correctly. So, hand comes across, you stand behind the chair and to the side of it, bring it back. So you've got two bits, different parts. You've got your backrest, which is obviously a, um, a very light part, it's one part. The rest of your chair is the heavy part, so the, you want to get the heavy part as back as close as possible. And then you can literally just use your little fingers to close the chair. The alternative way, if you want to do the opposite of that, is you stand to the side in front of the chair, you bring the chair forward, so your gravity is basically undoing it, and you just push and separate your hands. Um, obviously the other way you can do it, which is uh, really good for people that have got MS or balance issues, Stand behind the chair, thighs touching, reverse grip, throw the chair forward and you end up in the most stable position known to mankind. This is great if you uh, yeah, have your poor balance and things like that. So I'm just going to do a little walk around the chair. Um, you've got your motors at the back, tap, tap. These are 250 watt uh, brushless motors, literally the best motors you can buy. They're high torque, um, so they're not the same as our other 250 watt motors. Um, amazing for going up and down the hills. They've also got the freest, freest running motor of anything, so you can literally push this wheelchair with someone here, one finger. Um, it means if you're even pushing a heavyweight, it's ridiculously easy. If you need to walk behind it, use it like a walker or a stroller. It's very easy as well. And obviously, if the chair is in a folded position, the way you manoeuvre it around the house, so you've actually got some thumb holders here. So either if you're pushing it up the ramps, you hold from here, and put your thumbs on here, or if you're wheeling it around the home or out to the car, you can put your hands there. If you need to open the door or you want to turn it like a suitcase, it's got a useful handhold as well. Right, flip it back into electric mode, it's just tap, tap. When you're doing it with your feet, it's not a boot, boot, it's literally you've got to be gentle. If you can't do it gently or you haven't got the balance or you're heavy handed, just use your hands. Okay, so we've got the batteries at the back. Um, let me just move that clip out of the way. Right, you've got two 10AH batteries, uh, 24 volt, 240 watt hours. This is your leading lead. This goes into your control unit, which is based underneath the seat, um, which I can actually show you from the top. You only need to access this. The easiest way to get to it is uh, take the cushion off, Put your last two straps to the side and this is your control unit. So this is your brain. So you've got your left, right motor, your left motor, and this is a mixture of your batteries and your joystick. As well as having uh, this kind of trampoline effect base at the back, you've also got a trampoline effect backrest so you can um, make it more upright or you can make it more kind of concave so you seep into it a little bit more. Um, you've also got a telescopic backrest so for those that are taller, I oh, need to release it a little bit more, for those that are taller you can pull this up as well which means um, you can either walk behind it without having to stoop down or if you have a longer and taller back you can have this higher up. If that's the case we're going to recommend a wraparound backrest. A wraparound backrest is something that covers the whole of your back. So rather than just having this gap here, it wraps around the whole of the back, meaning the whole of your back is covered. Especially if you're, if you're, if you're tall, like you're six foot, six foot two, whatever, 
you're going to need a four inch cushion um, and then where you're coming up in height on the cushion you then have to compensate by having a wrap around backrest and coming up in height on the back all right let's just pop that back in and we lock it off just here so what's happening these screws are just pinching in here which is locking off that kind of telescopic um, movement okay so to remove the batteries underneath here you've got basically two clips this part of the clip clips in to this space here i don't know if you can see that um, and then when the batteries go in they go in together you remove them together as a pair reason being you're either going to remove them to reduce weight or you're going to remove them uh, to charge the batteries off the chair um, so actually I'll tell you what I'll move I'll take this out again um, and let me just hold the line hold there for two seconds I'm just going to grab the charger and show you how it's charged right so I should have got organised, really, but I didn't. So this would go into your plug socket. This is your ch a, a, a charger. It's not the one you'll get. This is an older style charger, to be fair. Um, this, if you want to charge your batteries on the chair, this bit would go into your joystick. If you want to charge the batteries off the chair, you need this little um, lead. This lead mimics your controller unit lead. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to ever put your main charger directly into here. I mean, you can see it doesn't line up. We have had customers that haven't watched the videos, haven't read the user manuals, and have gone and done that, and they've blown the battery and the, the end of the charger, and then blamed it on us, surprisingly. Um, but yeah, read the user manual always. Um, watch the videos, because we do do this for your benefit. Right, so that would just go in there, and now you're passing current through both batteries, and you're charging them exactly at the same time off the chair. This is useful for, if you ever went round a friend's or family relative's house and you've been out for a long day out, the chair maybe got a bit muddy uh, or something like that and they don't want the chair in the house, you can be, that's fine, I'll remove the batteries, I'll bring them in the house and you can charge them overnight. Great for hotel stays and also great for holidays. Obviously removing your batteries for flights and things like that. Uh, when you're on holiday, you're gonna need to charge your batteries off the chair sometimes. Right, let's attach to the joystick. So we're gonna ignore these loose kind of leads because we've got so many demos that come in who are left and right handed. I don't want to spend my whole life doing up and undoing cable ties. So we just leave this as what's called a floating lead. So I can move it quickly round to the left, quickly round to the right. To put your joystick in the end of the uh, armrest, you just pop it in. If one's got a longer reach, you can have it further out. If one's got a shorter reach, you can have it further in, all the way in. All you've got to do now is lock it off. I'm just going to lock that off as well. Okay. You've got, well, once upon a time, there's a white arrow here. This is like a three-year-old chair and a white arrow here. You're going to push in and twist to make a secure connection. Right. I'm now going to show you the different ways of getting in and out of the chair. Because I'm that little bit, well, I'm not that tall. I'm five foot ten. But this cushion for me is too small. For me to be comfortable, I need... Um, the upgraded cushion, so I'm just going to grab that off one of the other chairs. There we go. So the upgraded cushion, the standard one cushion it comes with is about two inches. Um, this is three inches to three and a half at the peak. It's contoured, it's a bit spongier. It will help to stretch my legs out a little bit. And I know that I'm the most comfortable for me at my height with an upgraded cushion. Anyone past six foot probably wants to go for a four inch cushion. Okay, so the first way of getting in and out as you can pop your foot plate up, meaning that you can back on into it, find your armrest, sit down, and the foot plate can come down, and then you can sit in a comfortable position. Another great way of coming in and out of the chair is from the side. So both the armrests come up, uh, so it means you can get underneath tables, same for this side, uh, for eat, or underneath tables, eating, drinking, working. It's also gonna give you more options on getting in and out of the chair. So if you keep this arm, dead vertical, this will go up and down all day long to its heart's content. However, if you bring it back, do you see how it's hyperextended and it's now not vertical, it's gone back on itself? This is so when you get in and out, you can now push your weight down on here, weight down to here and lower yourself in from the side. It's just a gentle half turn and then the armrest can come down again. 
But the biggest advantage is when you now get out of the chair by having your hand, uh, your armrest vertical like this and being able to put pressure on it, you can use this like a crutch or a high point of leverage to push yourself out of the chair, meaning it's far easier to get out of the chair. No faffing with the foot plate. Um, and for some people's disabilities, um, or for people that have slightly chunkier thighs and things like that, the foot plate option isn't the best unless you're gonna have a higher cushion because what happens with your compressed down, thighs will catch on here and they'll find it hard to get the foot plate up and down. So the, the, a great option is to come from the side. Don't come necessarily like this, the three kind of quarter angle, right foot this side of the wheel, left foot this side of the wheel and come in at that angle is by far the easiest option. Okay, and then when you're done, you just lock it off with this little tab here. There you go. So another thing is if this ever gets stuck, and which people do bring it back too far, and then they try and do that, all you've got to do is push from the join and it will come down. So push from this join and it will come down. It will come down absolutely fine if you just bring it to vertical, but anything past vertical, you just push from the join. Right, I think it's time that we go take this outside to where the chair really comes into its own. So I'm gonna wheel it, wheel it out, jump in it. I'll tell you something I'm doing, gonna do quickly. I'm gonna show you how to program a chair and I'm just gonna make sure that this chair is programmed to manufacture settings because I wanna have the chair's full capabilities. So when we're talking to customers over the phone, we're going to ask them about their uh, competence level, uh, how they feel like they're going to handle the joystick, their type of disability. So for example, if someone's got Parkinson's and has got very shaky hands, first of all, straight away, I'm going to tone down the joystick because what that's going to do is it's going to take down the sensitivity. There's also things we can add like golf ball attachments, stuff like that. So at the moment, we're on uh, acceleration 15 and I'm hoping this top speed is going to be about 20 that's going to mean manufacturer settings. So that's good. So when I'm outside, that means my, all the torque is that I need is going to be going to the motors. Um, and it means that I'm going to have um, enough power and enough responsiveness to do everything I want in a, a very, very competent and capable way. Okay. Get the door. Right, now... My cameraman's just going to follow me up and we're going to take you up around the usual route that we've done in other videos. We're going to cover curbs, we're going to cover campers, um, we might do a grassy bank. It's pretty cold out here actually, so we'll try, I'm not going to make it ridiculously long. Um, but you'll see what the chair can do. We're going to go down a curb over some something that mimics, mimics cobbles. Right, also, I'm just going to bring this out a little bit away from me. Easiest way to hold your joystick, create a V. Put your crevice in here, wrap your hand around here, that's going to stabilise your hand, and then you can just guide your hand forward with the joystick. I'll keep it slow for now, so the chair doesn't run away from me. However, actually what I'll do is, I'm going to show you how fast this chair actually really is. You don't have to follow me, you can stay slow and I'll do a loop. It's quite nippy. Electromagnetic brakes obviously stop when you take your hand off, they'll click and then they'll engage again. You'll hear the clip when you want to go forward. So we're going to go up and over this ramp. Whenever you go up and over ramps, you want to be dead square on. Front two wheels touch at the same time, followed by your back two. You can go slow, you can go fast. To be honest, this chair will take it at any speed, it's no problem. Um, I'm going to take you over here. So this type of terrain is going to mimic cobbles. Go over this absolutely no problem at all. And the same again, slow fast, whatever it, the blitz is over here, no problem. Right, we'll go talk about curbs now. So this chair will go up quarter curbs forward, drops curbs forward, reverse up half curbs backwards. You can actually go down a full curb forward. Um, I wouldn't recommend it unless you take it at speed and you're a very, very competent wheelchair user and you don't weigh more than about 13 stone. Um, but it's safe for pretty much any user to go down a three-quarter curb as long as you take it the right way. Right, so we'll talk basics. 
I'm going to approach this curb square on. I'm going to stop when my front two wheels are about an inch or two away. This now gives me enough momentum to get up it, but it's also going to be slow enough that my front wheels can press into the curb and they gently climb it. What you don't want to do when taking curbs is lean forward into it because that puts all the weight in your front wheels. You want to stay leant back and neutral. Your front wheels now dig in and it will gently climb. So when coming off this curb, um, I want to be square so my wheels are facing the right direction and I can come straight off. That's the safe way to come up and down curbs. Always square, always straight on. Never ever at an angle because it'll just it'll move your wheels and it'll be very, very dangerous. I'm going to talk to you about doing cambers now. So I'm going to do this camber here. So this is what's called a left to right camber. Um, that means that when I'm going along here, my front wheels are going to veer out to the right because we've got a lightweight chair. This chair weighs uh, 27 kilos with the batteries, 24 without. We've got two 10 AH batteries and they each weigh about a, st a kilo and a half. So that means that this chair is going to be quite skittish. This is why it is so important not to have lightweight, really lightweight chairs outside because the lighter you go, the more skittish they're going to be. And once they're gone, you have no control over getting them corrected again. So I'm going to point my joystick into this camber and this is going to keep me going exactly where I want to go. I mean, this chair is ridiculously capable on cambers, so I have absolutely no problem with going along here. I feel safe as anything. This person's driveway makes the natural camber, so naturally my wheel chair is going to want to go that way, so I'm going to just cross steer down here into it. No problem again. I'm going to do a 180 spin here to show the turning circle and ease of manoeuvrability. And we're going to create the angle now to come off this curb dead square. Because remember, we do everything square on. Here we go, we can just drop down. You can actually come off um, curbs so slowly that they literally crawl down the front with the front wheels and they crawl down the back so you feel nothing. So this would be perfect for people that have got spinal issues, um, you know, slip vertebrae and discs and things like that and have had, you know, bad back issues. Right, I'm going to go up this curb forward. I'm going to talk to you about wheels and maximum curb time. So, just get myself vaguely set up. Okay, so, on a good quality wheelchair with good quality wheels, your max curb climb is a quarter of the mat of the wheel. So if you were to split this into one, two, three, four separate pieces, your max curb climb is that bottom quarter. Same for this wheel. Your, this is a 12 and a half inch wheel, so your max curb climb is about that, because that's about a quarter of the chair. So that equates to a half curb. So never try and go up more than what you can per wheel. So your max curb climb is probably something like this quarter curb here. When you do stuff like quarter curbs, it is absolutely essential that you hit attack it square on. You do your little stop, your wheel's now going to dig in and you go up. I'm now going to spin myself around as a bit of a camber and dip here, so it's a bit dodgy. So you can actually see how, if you go down slowly, you can literally just crawl down and you don't really feel too much of a thing, especially on that. I did the back one much better than I did the front, to be fair. Right, I'm going to show you how to reverse up the curb now. We start far away, so then slam it in reverse. Our front wheels spin. Once they've spun, we stop. We now want to make sure that we get ourselves square onto the curb. We do this by jabbing either bottom left or bottom right till we get ourselves square. And now we're going to change. If we just bring ourselves around to the joystick, we're going to change the position of our hand. So we go from this grip, because if you were to pull back now, you pull back out to the side, meaning your chair is going to go wonky. So you change it to pincer grip. That means your elbow pulls back dead square. So you bring your hand back here, dead in line with here, and hopefully, if we get this right, our back two wheels will hit at the same time, followed by our front. And that's how you go up a curb in reverse. Um, we're gonna go along this curb now, uh, this pavement. This has got loose grit and gravel, it's got dips, it's got potholes, it's got drains, it's got a right to left camber. So I'm now cross steering into this slope here. It will go over this, like it'll blitz it, like it doesn't even exist. Honestly, this chair is ridiculously capable. Handles grass, cobbles, even tight compact gravel. Um, fields in the winter, um, in the summer when it's dry. Perfect for either the, the London crowd person who wants their chair to be like a workhorse around London, or for the rural person who likes to be, um, you know, taking 
taking their dogs out, things like that. Or just for someone that wants a very capable and very, very safe wheelchair. There is not a more planted safer wheelchair on the market and I will challenge anyone to find me one, to be honest. I mean, I, people don't really understand in this industry, but I have literally sampled and tried every single one of my competitors' chairs. I know what's good, I know what's bad, I know where our chairs go compete against them, in what aspects. And I also have, we have to remember that we have two customers every single day, Monday to Friday, coming in for demos, who have our um, competitors' chairs. They tell me firsthand, um, you know, how much better our chairs are than theirs in certain aspects. So it's not me just making false claims. I actually have the knowledge. I've been doing this for seven years, you know. I'm probably the most knowledgeable or in the top five most knowledgeable people in the UK with an electric folding wheelchair. Right, we're going to go down this grassy bank today. It's, it's really long grass, it's been raining, it's muddy, but we're going to have a little play. So I'm going to line my wheels up, I'm going to go, whenever we go down a slope, always speed level one, it means you, your wheels will lock in, they'll stop, you're always going to have full control. Start turning in. I'm going to go down the bottom on a bit of grass. Now, this is wet grass. This is grass. And then we're going to go back up this hill. This is actually quite a steep hill. So, absolutely destroyed that hill. Middle of winter, well, kind of middle of winter. You can see how muddy it is from my tyre tracks. But that didn't even blink, like that was easy. Um, one last thing I'm going to attempt to do, I'll see if I can do it at the end, I'm going to try and go down a full kerb if I can find the angle to come off one safely. Just so you can see, see what the stair can do. Right, it's going to be a bit kamikaze, but I'm going to give it a go. You know, there aren't hardly any chairs in the market that can do that. I mean, you were looking at the most capable, the most competent, the most planted. The chair with the highest ground clearance, it's an absolute animal. Um, I'm gonna cut the video off now because I think we've literally uh, covered everything we can. But buy the LiftTech Smart Chair X if you want freedom, safety, capabilities, and yeah, just uh, yeah, buy the Smart Chair X, you won't be disappointed. I'll see you on the next video.